Hi, I'm Jeremy Witt with Andrognosis, and last week we did a stall overview of Paranoid Android 3.1, and today's the full review. Let's begin. Alright, first we're going to go over the pros of um, Paranoid Android 3.1. So, let's go into the settings, and let's go into customization. And hybrid properties and um, I'm on stock UI right now so this will give you very uh, no, phone stock UI but you could also do phablet UI so let's try that out and this gives you something like a what's on that Nexus 7 so but to me it seems a little bit small buttons are really small down here and so the status bar icons and whatnot is very tiny but on one side you got the quick settings on the other side you got the notifications just like on the Nexus 7 so just that and you got three different tablet UIs to choose from now mind you changing the, the interface uh, DPI will and will not change your apps and other things so you got one that tablet UI that's at 192, one tablet UI that's at 220, and one that's at 250. We'll try the 250 one. To me, this was the only one that was actually um, usable, giving you a big enough uh, status bar, icons, and whatnot. So just like if uh, you had an old school uh, Android tablet. Well, let's go back to stock. And this is very nice compared to the old version of Paranoid Android where you had to reboot to see your changes. Um, this one you don't have to do that. It just automatically does it. And it's really cool to see how it's going to affect your phone right from the get-go without having to do a system reboot. Now you could also change the interface. And um, so you you change the workspace where that's obviously going to be where your launcher is at, nap bar, stuff like that. It's going to affect all those things. And your system UI apps, your user apps, you could make, you know, change them to certain defaults of like tablet, tablet, phone. And then you change the, what would be the stock color of everything. You know, when in fact your ones that are paranoid Android colors, per se, this would be your own personal stock color, your default color. Let's go into apps. And this is where, if you want to um, make individual changes to apps, um, DPI, um, whether it's a phablet, tablet layout, colors, You'd all do it all from here. Now let me pick out a app that I know has a tablet UI, so I can show how this might work. So currently I'm at 320 on that. Let's bring that down to like 280, close enough. And let's give it a tablet UI there. And you could also change the individual colors, but We'll apply that, and we'll launch it, and I'll show you what it looks like. So yeah, it's not the most perfect thing you see when you have it up in portrait mode. It doesn't look that great, but let's put it in the landscape, and it gives you a preview. The tweet right to the side gives you the multi-window experience that you expect on a tablet. Now there are also other apps where you could see um, the tablet interface, which is uh, Gmail and the Mail app, and of course any app that can go into tablet mode. And let's take a look at the paranoid colors on YouTube. So you got the red and black on the SAS bar nav bar. And we'll take a look at Google Plus. 
and you'll see the nav bar turns white so the status bar and you got some blue highlights now let's go into tools and check this out so this is um this other settings here where you can reset the properties you can back up your preferences that you already changed um, if you made some other changes and you had a backup already made you can restore preferences and you could also check um, expert mode I checked it I didn't really notice any difference but there could be something I'm missing okay so let's go to toolbars and you can do um, the first option here is do quick pull down edge of status bar will be pulled down will pull down quick settings well what that means is that this will be the first thing you see not the notification bar like it is on Android default choose the hide clock show the clock you can do um, small AMPM had it set to normal or hidden that's the default you can show notification counts on your like text messages missed calls email whatnot customize tiles so you could add some new ones so I could add sound one right there uh, looks like you got uh, choices of airplay mode battery stats Bluetooth brightness go to sleep GPS mobile data orientation setting sound synchronization uh, flashlight Wi-Fi Wi-Fi AP user switcher and NFC so those are all different tiles that you could use um, you could choose for it to make a sound or be silent when you click on the quick settings or anything in the notification bar you could also add a sound and vibrate just vibrate or keep it silent I still don't know what split menu button is <laughs> um, pie controls you could you know choose uh, the trigger area that means you can make it bigger or smaller what area that you hit on the screen to bring up the pie controls um, you can prevent rotation so if you had it like in landscape it'd still be like on the right hand on the bottom left or top wherever you chose for it to show now you could also assign your um, pie controls to come down from the top or you could reassign it and put it to the left hand side just like so and you could also let's get rid of that you could also assign it to come down from the bottom and you could also do the same with the right hand side of course it brings up a quick settings and everything <clears throat> Now you could also change like how fast it comes up. So this is um, slow, and you could do also uh, normal. This is the normal speed for the pipe controls come up, and you could also do bear. And what this one does, it pretty much brings up no notifications or quick settings option. It's just the home button, back button, search button, menu button, whatever you may have on there. Now, you could also quickly go into um, notifications, the pie controls, and quick settings by going to the left hand side. And you could also bring up the task manager. And you can clear all tasks, except for the last one. Just swipe that away. You could also bring up Google Mail using the search button, just like so. And you can go back home. Now you can choose um, pie size. 
I think I just have mine on normal default right now, but you could also do large, small. You could also choose um, the gap. You could choose to have a persistent menu item. You could have um, search the button or not in there. Got it. So when you have the desktop expanded, you can clearly see that you have a lot more room. Um, just for viewing. Let's go back to um, regular and you just long press the button and press the expandable icon. Now as you see here it takes a long time to load. This is one of the things I don't like. And then the, um, it's a little bit, see it's not as smooth. It's a little bit chopped up for a minute while you're doing this. So this is one of the things I don't like about it. Now let's take a look at the lock screen. And I have it here with expandable expanded widgets and see-through screen. So I'm going to move that up. Slide to unlock. And also you can see here I have some shortcuts. So I can just put any shortcut I want and I can go right into that app. This is messaging. Very handy to have on the lock screen. And of course you put other apps on there. And calculator. Voila. Got a calculator up. So this is very handy to have. <clears throat> and one other feature I like about it. You could also um, enable rotation on lock screen. And there you go. You have your lock screen landscape also. As well as portrait. So in conclusion, there weren't very many cons I found. Um, it was a little bit uh, laggy because of the air kernel they're using, but you could always flash into the kernel, experiment with the ones that you find a balance between the battery life and performance that you'd want. Um, the radios were a little bit weaker, and just some other little things I can't even think of right now, but it's been a great ROM, so go ahead and try it out. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Until later.